You know a video topic is good when two separate fan bases express their disinterest and dislike for that idea. We're talking today about Vancouver Canucks forward JT Miller, and a particular team that he has actually had a history with in the past, popping itself back up in trade rumors. Let's go over the Vancouver Canucks and this article on dailyfaceoff.com, which in my observation is the earliest time we have seen this thing pop up. If there was a tweet or a radio hit or a comment made by somebody else elsewhere, then please let me know in the comments if there is indeed a linking idea for this that goes beyond December 2nd from yesterday. But Sarah Vailey's article from dailyfaceoff.com, 15 trade targets as the market heats up in December. JT Miller, Vancouver Canucks forward, is indeed on the list, and he has himself a pretty high ranking of 7th overall. Now, before we go over the actual trade idea, let's go over the profile. JT Miller, 28 years old, 6'1", 218, he plays center, he plays wing, he can play any forward position, and he's got $5.25 million a season till 2023. This is a guy who has arguably been the best Vancouver Canucks forward this season, aside with Connor Garland. These two guys have been pretty much the life of the team since Pedersen and Horvat and Besser kind of started to hibernate, and despite the fact that the Vancouver Canucks are very bad this season, JT Miller goes out there and leads the team in goals, he leads the team in points, he's got 23 points in 24 games played on, as we said, a bad team. Two years ago, he was over a point per game, 72 points in 69 games. In the bubble, he was over a point per game as well for the Vancouver Canucks. And last season, in the absolutely treacherous Canucks team that was plagued with the virus, he had himself 46 points in 53 games there. He has been the most consistent, most productive, and most offensively capable Vancouver Canucks player the past few seasons, and it's really come to show off itself now that the rest of the team kind of sucks, but Miller, because he is a guy that is so valuable, and because he has an extra year on his contract, there is an idea floating around that says that he might actually be involved in a trade. It's why Sarah Valley lists Miller as the seventh most likely trade target as the market heats up. Here's the write-up that they have on Miller. Left wing, Vancouver Canucks, 28 years old, one more season at 5.25. A number of teams have been circling around JT Miller, including one of his old teams, the New York Rangers, amid the Canucks' disastrous season. Although it seems as if Jim Benning does not have the full autonomy to make a core altering trade at the moment, the truth is the Canucks could use six more Millers, not have zero of them. He's done just about everything Vancouver could have asked for him since his trade from Tampa Bay with 141 points in 146 games in a Canucks uniform. It seemingly will be up to Benning's successor to analyze Miller's future fit, whether, with one more year left, now is the time to maximize value or keep him as a key building block. This is the idea. JT Miller back over to the New York Rangers, and it's one that honestly, like, after this article was posted, I saw a whole bunch of people, Statboy Steven included, talking about this on New York Rangers Twitter, and just having a whole bunch of debate with Rangers fans as to whether or not a JT Miller would be a beneficial player on this team, and... You know, okay, I just want to go over this from the Vancouver perspective first and foremost, because when it comes to trading away JT Miller, this is the guy that literally has been one of the best players on the Canucks this season, and if you're going to go out there and start quote-unquote building for the future like you might if you're the new Canucks GM... Maybe trading away a Miller does indeed work because you're getting a whole bunch of picks, you're getting a whole bunch of prospects. The haul for a Miller would be pretty significant, and it would be a lot more than what the Vancouver Canucks actually got him for when they made that trade with Marek Mazanich and the first-round pick back in, what was it, the 2019 NHL Entry Draft Day 2? Back then, Miller was seen as a middle six forward who had 40-50 point potential, but he absolutely exploded with the Vancouver Canucks the next season, being, as we noted, the over point per game monster that he still is today. There's no doubt in my mind that if Miller was playing for a better team, he would be a lot more productive. And the idea of Miller playing for a squad that is better than Vancouver, a team that's actually going to go out there and try, not like Vancouver has in the previous few games, and actually play a cohesive system. I do think Miller is in that position where if he does go to another team, he does have a chance to absolutely spread his wings and fly. But oh, Lego, off-ice issues, he's a locker room cancer, he is this, he is that. 
Honestly, just based off of the Vancouver perspective, I disagree. I don't think that Miller is a locker room cancer or that he's going out there making other people in the locker room uncomfortable in any way. He's just a guy who really likes to win, and it gets super visible whenever you watch the Vancouver Canucks and you see them fumble a puck on a power play or have a bad shift once in a while, because Miller, skating to the bench, is always going to be the guy who yells out a swear or two. Most likely two. And yes, even though that is a trait that you would say you'd rather not have than have, from the perspective of being a teammate of this guy and not wanting to aggravate him and make the rest of the vibe a less enjoyable experience, at the end of the day, you know, it's hockey. You're not here to make friends. You're not here to be nice. You're here to play. And Miller has shown time and time again that when it comes to caring for the game and being a player that actually wants to win, hey, he really wants to win. Sure, earlier this season there might have been some concern amongst Canucks fans. Oh, Miller's always swearing, man. Miller's always angry. Miller's always this. Miller's always that. But once we had ourselves the rumors that were started up by Sakaris and that were sort of commented on by Donnie from Donnie and Dolly as well, talking about how there was this apparent rift between Horvat and Miller, and okay, here's the tweet. Donnie just said that everyone is talking about a Miller versus Horvat split in the dressing room, but the thing that they have heard is that it might be more of a situation where Miller is leading the veteran group, and they're kind of fed up with younger players on the team. Now, this, the way you might look at it, oh, you know, they're fed up with younger players. That's, that's not good, man. Like, they're starting conflict in the room. Um... The Vancouver Canucks fan base is fed up with the younger players too. The younger players themselves, yeah, they should be sort of disappointed as well. And no, not younger players as in like Pud Colson or Hoaglander. These guys are fine. Talking about the big stars, the big bucks, the guys like Petey and Besser and Horvat, bro. Like, I get it from an outside perspective. It could be like, oh, there's a locker room riff. They're harping on the younger guys. Um, no, everybody in this city is kind of harping on the younger guys. It's not exclusive to JT Miller. That is not a reason, in my opinion, to single out Miller as a locker room cancer, because this might be the case heading into that locker room. But long story short, Miller being a trade target for the New York Rangers is something that has been brought up by Daily Faceoff, and a lot of Rangers fans are debating as to whether or not this would be a replacement over Ryan Strom. Ryan Strom is a guy that you have on your team right now who's playing pretty well with Panarin, and he does need a new contract for next season. Strom this year has 14 points in 17 games played. Last season, he was a point-per-game player. Miller is a better point producer when it comes to the cold, hard numbers. When it comes to the advanced analytics, Ryan Strom does have a better statistical profile. Now, I will argue and say that the goals against and all that doesn't really favor JT Miller because he plays in the Canucks, but still. I think if you're really getting to a point where you're trying to split apples and oranges, you have to start looking at the trade itself and say, okay, well, what exactly would it cost to get a JT Miller? Because you're not getting this guy for a cheap price. Miller is one of the best players on the Canucks, and therefore, the Canucks are going to demand a King's ransom for him. Is it really worth it if you're the Rangers to say, okay, and Niels Lundqvist, a first-round pick, and a third for JT Miller, who we're only going to have for another season, and then, in a year, we're going to have the same problem we have right now with Ryan Strom, which is, okay, we need to resign this guy. When you're weighing out the trade scenario plus Miller versus Strom, it becomes a lot more easy to say, okay, well, let's just stick with Strom. Let's just re-sign him to a contract. We can keep Niels Lundqvist, we can keep our draft picks, and we don't need to make a trade for a guy that the Rangers had in their system a long time ago, but they just got rid of because, yeah, Vladislav Domestikov. For JT Miller, though, if it were up to me, I get it. I have a lot of friends in real life who are Canucks fans and who always tell me, yeah, we need to trade Miller, dude. We need to trade him, get a whole bunch of picks, get some prospects and stuff, and build for the future. Build for the future, you know? Build for the future. But, like, for Miller, he is 28. So he's not old, per se. And by the time Elias Pettersson hits his stride again, and I'm going to say again because we know it's possible, it's probably going to happen, he's not going to be this bad for the rest of his career, let alone the rest of his contract, in my opinion— by the time Pedersen is 25, 26 years old, and he is going out there being a point-per-game star once again. Miller's gonna be 30. 31. That's not that bad. Like, the Sedins were in their early 30s when they went to the Cup Finals, so, like, unless you're really committing to a rebuild on the fly, okay, we need to get rid of our assets now, we need to get rid of our older guys and get younger picks and stuff now, I would personally be very okay with keeping Miller, because as the Daily Faceoff article says, they need more Millers than they need less. So, 
I don't know. Same thing goes with Connor Garland, but that's an entirely other story for another day. So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about the idea of a JT Miller trade? I personally would be sort of indifferent because I'm kind of in that apathetic stage where I'm just like observing the team and talking about it rather than getting emotionally invested into it and saying, okay, I'd rather do this and that and whatever. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this video. Ash Rolls is I9. And bye.